Hello everyone, this is Miss Nuke with By Barber College. Today we're going to talk about Chapter 9, Skin Structure, Disorders, and Disease. This would be the platinum or the um, gray looking textbook and we would be on page 221, all right? A few learning objectives, you have about eight. The first is to describe the structure and division of the skin. The next is to list the functions of the skin. The third learning objective is to identify and describe common primary and secondary skin lesions. The fourth learning objective is to, is to describe common skin inflammations and infections. The fifth one is to list and describe disorders of the sebaceous and pseudofurious glands. The sixth learning objective is to list and describe types of skin pigmentations. And the seventh is to identify common skin hypertrophies. And the last learning objective, number eight, is to identify and describe types of skin cancer. All right? So know the anatomy of the skin. Know the anatomy of the skin. Uh, healthy skin is slightly moist, is soft, is uh, acidic. Uh, healthy skin is pliable. It is uh, blemish free. Um, it is flexible and healthy skin is also uh, fine. It's fine grain in the texture of the skin, okay? Uh, let's see, skin varies in thickness over different parts of the body. That's just like the skin on my eyelids or the skin that is on the soles of my feet or the palms of my hand. It's not going to be the same skin. There's a, a different density to that skin, okay? It could be thinner or thicker than the other skin, on the body, okay? Uh, the skin is constructed of two clearly divide, defined divisions. It will be the epidermis and the dermis. So the epidermis, also known as cuticle or scarf skin, is the outermost protective layer of the skin and is the thinnest layer of the skin. The epidermis contains no blood vessels, no blood vessels, uh, but has many small nerve endings, the layers of the strata of the epidermis. So you have the stratum corneum, the strata lucinum, uh, the stratum granulosum, uh, the stratum spinosum, and you have the stratum dermatative. You want to make sure that you know the difference between those five stratums. And then over here on figure nine, one where it's talking about the layers of the skin, it will also help to give you a visual of it, okay? Then we have the dermis. So the dermis is the underlining or the inner layer of the skin. Uh, another name for dermis would be derma, corneum, cutis, or true skin. Those are all equivalent to dermis. And another figure on 9-2, that's page 224. Going over to the next page, 225, we have the papillary layer, which lies directly beneath the stratum granosium of the epidermis. So, it contains small cone-shaped projections of elastic tissue called papillae. Now, that point upward into the epidermis. Some of these papillae contain loop capillaries, which are small blood vessels, okay? Uh, others contain small structures called Tactile uh, caboclos uh, with nerve fibers ending that are sensitive to touch and pressure. Uh, the reticular layer is the deeper layer of the dermis. It supplies the skin with oxygen and nutrients. The reticular layer contains the following structures. So it contains fat cells, sweat glands, uh, blood vessels, hair follicles, lymph glands, 
uh, erect their pili muscles, and it also contains oil, oil glands inside of the uh, reticular layer. Uh, subconscious tissue, also known as adipose tissue, so subconscious tissue can also be called adipose tissue with the AD. All right. Um, it's a layer of fatty tissue found below the dermis. That's below the dermis. Then the textbook talks about fluids of the skin uh, and nerves of the skin. So you have a murder, a motor nerve fiber. You have a sensory nerve fiber, a secretory uh, nerve fiber also. Then it talks a little bit about sense of touch. It talks a little bit, the textbook also talks a little bit about skin color, um, meaning melanin. Um, melanin is not just um, have to do with skin color. Melanin can also be uh, hair color. It can also be eye color as well, okay? Then it talks a bit about skin electricity. So when you're young, like you all, um, your skin is more electistic than when you become older. You can do a couple of different uh, electricity tests on the skin, which is one where you hold the skin for about 10 seconds or so. And when you let go, how fast the skin snaps back is a great age teller of how much electricity you have in your skin. Now, if I was older than what I am, <laughs> then what would happen is that that skin would stay up like this and it would, even when I let it go, it would still be up um, as if I'm still pulling on it and it would take a longer amount of time to go back to its natural form, okay? So that's electricity of the skin. And electricity of the skin Please uh, be able to understand collagen as well, collagen. Then on page 227, we have the glands of the skin. So the skin contains two types of duct glands. Uh, it has the pseudofurious glands or the sweat glands, and then it has the sebaceous glands or oil glands. Okay, sebaceous is equivalent to sebum as well. Then the textbook talks about the absorption level of skin, the functions of the skin. So we know that the skin is to protect, right? Because if we didn't have skin, when we go outside and it rains, it's just gonna rain inside of our organs. So we have skin to protect us. We also know a key fact about skin is that skin is our largest uh, organ in our body. Okay, let's see. Let's flip on over. Then we have sensation. So the skin responds to heat, cold, touch, pressure, pain. The skin responds to heat, cold, touch, pressure, pain, and movement through its sensory nerve endings. So stimulation of a sensory nerve ending sends a message to the brain which then stimulates a response. So it's not you telling you to do it, okay? The message is sent to the brain first. Then we have heat regulation, which is a function of the skin that protects the body from the environment, right? Uh, a healthy body maintains a constant internal temp of about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 37 degrees Celsius. All right, um, let's see. Then we have absorption. Uh, absorption beyond the top layer of the skin is limited, but it does occur. So some medications are designed to enter the body through the skin where they are slowly absorbed and dispersed. Um, Products designed for skin care are not intended to be absorbed beyond the top layer of skin, which is the epidermis, okay? Excretion would be perspiration. Um, now, here's the thing. We're in excretion. We're talking about um, it's warm out, so you're just sweating 
a little bit. A lot of times with excretion, that is our body's way of eliminating toxins as well, things that are not good for the body. So sometimes it's good to, um, to have excretion now, but if the excretion is rapidly where it's pouring down, that could be something else going on with that client, uh, some underlying issues, even high blood pressure perhaps, okay? Um, then we have secretion, which will be sebum is um, secreted by the sebaceous glands and lubricates the skin, hair, the skin and the hair, keeping them soft and pliable. So that's secretion. Everybody wants secretion. Then the textbook is uh, talking about identifying disorders and diseases of the skin. So you got lesions of the skin, lesion, a mark on the skin. It may indicate injury or damage that changes the structure of tissue of, um, of an organ. Uh, a lesion can also be as simple as how about a frecker, a uh, freckle, okay? So um, the thing about skin lesions, you have to still be mindful of them and get them checked out because it could also indicate something that is cancerous, okay? So uh, it could be very dangerous skin cancer, a lesion can be. So lesions can also indicate a disorder in the skin, a disease, and it may be symptomatic of other internal diseases. Okay, then we have primary lesions of the skin. And you want to make sure that you're reading the table uh, here, table 9-1 on primary lesions um, on page 230. Then the textbook talks about secondary lesions. And then you have another table on page 232, table 9-2, talking about secondary lesions. Um, in discussing disorders of the sebaceous and pseudoferous glands, so uh, an open commodo will also be called a blackhead. A blackhead, sometimes people get them on their face, uh, sometimes people get them on their back, um, different areas, but their open uh, commodo is a blackhead. Uh, it's a hair follicle filled with keratin and sebum is what a blackhead is. And then comedones appear most frequently on the face, especially in the T-zone, in the T-zone. So uh, that would be the center of the face. And then it talks a little bit about a uh, closed comedone. So a closed comedone would just be a white head. It appears as a small bump just under the skin surface. Then it talks about malia and then acne. And then you have different types, different, uh, well, levels or grades of acne. So I want you all to be mindful of that on 234. Um, then on 235, it talks about uh, seborrheic dermatitis, rosacea, um, treatment for acne, Identifying disorders of the pseudoferous gland. So anhydrosis is deficiency in perspiration. That's that person um, that is very extremely high temperatures outside and they are not sweating. They have not broken, not a single sweat um, on their skin. So that would be anhydrosis. It's a deficiency in perspiration or more so the inability to be able to sweat, okay? Then we have bromohydrosis. So that's that foul um, smelling sweat. It could come from the armpits or from the actual feet, okay? That's bromohydrosis. That's that sweat, okay? Uh, then we have hyperhidrosis so that's excessive sweating that's not just the normal they just sweated a little bit that is excessive excessive sweating um hyperhidrosis keyword hyper then we have malaria rhubarb which is prickly heat it's an acute inflammatory disorder of the sweat glands characterized by eruption of small red vesicles accompanied by burning and itching of the skin, very painful. 
Um, then at the bottom of 236, it's going to ask us to recognize common inflammations and infections of the skin like dermatitis, um, irritant contact dermatitis, dermatitis venita, eczema, psoriasis. Uh, these things are not all the same. Eczema would be an inflammatory disease. Um, it can be acute or chronic but basically it's dry and it can also be moist lesions. Um, eczema is frequently accompanied by itching and burning. But no matter how mild or severe the case is with eczema, even if the client says, they, oh, I've had this since I was small, I still refer them out to a physician, even if they have recognized already that they do possess to have eczema, okay? Then we have psoriasis. So that's a chronic inflammatory skin disease. It could be dry red patches um, covered with like silvery coarse-like scales. That's psoriasis. Then we have herpes simplex. Herpes is a viral infection. It can produce fever blisters or cold sores. So even that client that is in your chair and they need, um, you know, their beard done or even a facial. If they have um, cold sores, which is herpes, um, on their facial area or their mouth region, that is still considered to be highly contagious. So you want to avoid that customer uh, by letting them know you can do the haircut service, but you will not be able to perform um, any facial services on them. Then it talks about IV dermatitis. Uh, the textbook on 237 wants us to recognize pigment disorders and hypertrophies of the skin. So in identifying types of skin pigmentations, you got hyperpigmentation, which means it's uh, darker than normal pigmentation. Uh, it's appearing as dark, uh, dark uh, splotches. So then we have hypopigmentation. It's the absence of pigment resulting in light or white spotches uh, on the skin. Then we have albinism. We um, That's just basically their lacking melanin or pigment in the skin. Colosma, uh, lictogamies, leucoderma, nevus. Uh, nevus is also considered to be a birthmark. Then we have the stain, tan, and the taligo. And then you have a couple of pictures here on 238. Please uh, make sure that you look at those. And then on 239, it's just understanding skin cancer. So um, you got different types of skin cancer. You got basal cell carcinoma. Uh, usually if something is basal, you have about a 90% survival rate if you have early uh, detection in it. Then you got squamous cell carcinoma, malignant uh, melanoma. Uh, the textbook also wants us to know how to maintain the health of our skin because um, that's we're stuck in the skin for our whole life. Um, then to sum the chapter up, you got a couple review questions in the back on 241. Quite a few terms uh, in the back, but just please make sure that you go through them. Go through the enunciation of each word and just take your time with this chapter. This is one of those chapters that you're definitely going to need to know when you're in the shop and when you're confronted with different issues um, with your clients. This is Ms. Noop from By Barber College. Uh, talking about chapter nine, skin structure disorders and disease. Thank you all. Have a great day.